I am very, very excited. The first snapshot of the 1.17 update, the Caves and Cliffs update, has finally dropped for us. The snapshot 20W40A, and I am super, super excited for it. Um, unfortunately, I, I do not have my zoom button, so uh, you're, you're gonna have to live without that for, for this video at least. And maybe future snapshot videos. Let me know if you want more of these down below in the comments. But anyways, in this video, we will be taking a look at some of the new features in 20W40A, the first 1.17 snapshot. And the first thing I want to take a look at is the copper ore. The new, the brand new ore. I'm very excited about this. It's a brand new ore in the world that now generates. Now, how it generates, we don't exactly know. Um, because currently it is just a, uh, a placeholder, it will change how they spawn uh, in the future. So, yeah, they spawn in the world in small veins, and I want to test something. I want to know if we can mine it with a stone pickaxe, or if we have to get an iron pickaxe. Also, sorry, my voice <laughs> did uh, cut out there for a second. So let's get back into survival mode here. My voice really does not want to cooperate. Okay, uh, so we can obviously mine it with an iron pickaxe. Beautiful. Now, can we mine it with a stone pickaxe? We can. Now, I assume we can't do it with a wooden pickaxe. Let's find out. Yeah, no, not gonna happen. So that is pretty cool. A brand new ore that now generates in the world. And of course, to get the ore, we would need a furnace with some sort of coal. Uh, so furnace and coal and that smelts then the ore and the same goes for if we have a blast furnace as well that does it twice as fast which is pretty cool and we get this brand new copper ingot right here that is looking pretty cool we have copper that's so cool now with this copper ingots we can now make the copper block which here is where things get really, really fun. We can of course make a copper block like this and when we place it in the world, it is going to deteriorate into, I hope that was the right word, uh, into these slightly and then eventually completely withered varieties of copper. Oxidizes, I believe the word is, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, it, and it changes, of course, texture. Now, I don't know, how long it takes uh i think it was like 50 something or 80 in minecraft days to change from uh each of the textures but i'm not 100 percent sure about that but it definitely takes a while and that is really really cool now what you can actually do is you can take honeycomb and say what to preserve uh this specific semi with a copper block you can go in and you can combine it with honeycomb and it becomes the waxed semi-weathered uh, copper and this waxed one will not deteriorate which is really really cool and of course very much useful for when you want to just build with this block without it going all greenish now with copper you can actually make these cut copper and with these cut coppers you can then go ahead and make stairs and you can also make uh, slabs and these will also deteriorate and also they are able to be uh, waxed as well right there so they don't oxidize. I really hope I'm saying that word right. But these are brand new blocks in the world and I absolutely love it. I love that cover are now part of the game. Now, also the placing sound. I love it. Also the breaking, of course. Now, how do they sound? Do they just sound differently? I wonder when walked on. I don't think so. I just think there are like in general metal sounds. Or is there? I don't think there is a difference. Let me know if you think so down below in the comments, but I don't think there is a difference, at least not yet. Um, but yeah, brand new blocks in the world. I love it. Now with this copper, you can also make a lightning rod, which you can place down, which redirects lightning strikes to, of course, the lightning rod. And from its place in a 16 block radius, 
it uh, redirects the lightning. So if we take a look in here, for example, if we just place it over there, actually here, then we know from this, this uh, blue line right here to this corner right here, that is 16 blocks from there to here. So if a lightning were to strike within this chunk, it would be redirected to that lightning, same as other places inside these um, red lines right there. Um, plus a block because it's outside of it's 60 blocks from this block right here to that red line over there. So you can do the math, but you get the idea. That is a pretty decent size. So if you're building a mainly book, uh, wood buildings, then now they will be safe from lightnings because you can now make this and place it on the rooftops. That is a pretty cool idea. Also, it outputs a redstone signal, I'm pretty sure, when it's struck by lightning. This is something I potentially could uh, could be making myself just for fun to see if a lightning ever strikes. I would place something like this, a piston, a redstone block, and then a redstone lamp, which is currently off. Um, eh. So imagine this being a wall and then over here, obviously this is ugly, but whatever, forget it. Uh, when a lightning strikes, this would basically auto automatically turn on the light if there has been a thunderstorm. So if I just get the coordinates of this specific lightning rod and summon a lightning. So if I summon a lightning bolt like... Nope, that's wrong. So if I summon a lightning like this, it would then pulse this piston and then activate the lamp over here, indicating, hey, a thunderstorm has been here and it actually struck my lightning rod. So it was just a short pulse, but that was pretty cool. And hopefully people can use these to make some pretty cool uh, contraptions. I can't think of any right now, but uh, I'm not a redstone genius like other people. So, uh, but yeah, in, in general, that is a pretty awesome feature of being able to detect lightning. I actually remember back in my days of playing Minecraft when I didn't know much about it in general, but also just in my old days of playing, I would, I'm pretty sure at one point made like a huge cobblestone tower and then netherrack at the top. And then if that netherrack was on fire, as lightning strike has actually had actually struck it. Um, that is something I believe I or someone I played with made back in the day. So that was actually pretty fun. And now, now we have lightning rods. Anyways, moving on. The next thing on my to-do list here is, well, not really to-do list, is the new crystals that spawn in the world. And we have one over here. These are looking pretty awesome. Here they are. They are looking very, very cool. Very cool. So these are the crystals right here growing in different stages and they have different stages. And these crystals, these amethysts, they grow on these um, budding butters right here. All right, I just got distracted. I uh, wanted to torch up the place a little bit. But these amethysts, they grow on these um, budding right here. Now, the interesting thing is you can't actually remove these and replace them somewhere else. If I were to just take, let's take another right pickaxe and go into survival mode, and try and mine this, it just breaks. I'm not able to actually pick this up. Uh, I can pick up the other ones here, as you can see. I can pick them up and I can place them and they, may I mind? Like, may I just say they sound amazing to walk on? That sounds amazing and I love it. Um, but here are these amethyst crystals and when you mine them, you get these amethyst shards. Now these right here are obviously not fully grown, but I wonder if you still get something from them? No. So when they are slow to break like this one, they don't have anything in them. Like you don't get anything. It has to be the fully grown ones right here that you can break very quickly and then get these amethyst shards from. That's pretty cool. Can you re-put them? No, you can't actually. You can't put these shards back in as a seed. That makes sense. Now, if I break this, will it drop itself? I wonder. Nope, it just breaks. So I assume maybe they just grow out automatically after a while. I don't actually know um, at all. And a quick note here, these have uh, four growing stages. They have, uh, let me see here. Hold on. They start out small, then they grow into medium, then after a while large, and then 
<laughs> eventually, after a while, it becomes uh, the Amethyst Cluster that you are able to mine, like this one right here. Also, you cannot harvest these bots with Silk Touch, which personally I feel like would be pretty cool if you could. Like, to just to decorate with, but uh, of course, this is the first step, so we'll see what comes. And I was just saying that maybe they just spawn automatically, and looks like they do. This looks like to be this, yeah, this is a small amethyst spot right here. This is a medium. Can we find a large one by any chance? Large. Okay, so here we actually have all of them. Uh, medium, small, medium, large, and cluster. Here they are, all four of them right there. And this is the only one that you can break. You can't even house these other ones uh, with silk touch, and you don't get anything from them. Um, now the question is... Are you able? I don't think you can this either. Nope, it just instantly breaks. What about this one, like the actual big one? Do you just then get the amethysts? Oh, you do. So you can automatically harvest these in a way. Um, hmm, hold on here, hold your hoses. Also, listen to this. <laughs> That's so cool. No, you cannot. I was hoping maybe there were a way to like detect when this thing is fully grown. I guess technically you can possibly, most likely, I will imagine, do it with an observer. Like if it, I assume that the observer is going to be able to detect a growth change. Uh, so if I just were to, for example, put a large amethyst right here. Uh... We will have to wait and see during this little test here, but if this block is up, then that means this observer has detected the growth of this amethyst right here. And in that case, you may be able to somewhat automatically harvest these in uh, spots that just gets generated. But we'll see. I will continue on with this uh, with the video and we'll see how that turns out at the end. Now, just while we are here at this place right here, we have some other interesting blocks. We have the calcite and the tuff right here uh, that generates outside as an outside layer of uh, the dome here. So if we were to go here, we have the white stuff and then we have the, uh, the tough stuff. Now, I wonder what pickaxes do we need in order to be able to mine through this? I can't imagine we will require... I, I, I'm old school, okay? So, wooden pickaxe can break even the tough and the white. So, of course, if you use diamond, it just goes quicker. And what about this? Okay, a wooden pickaxe is not able to break that. Nor is a uh, stone pickaxe. Nor is a golden pickaxe. You have to use an iron pickaxe to harvest these blocks right here. I think that is very, very fair. Yeah, that makes sense, but you can break these right, right here, just with wooden tools. I think it would be cool if some of these, like the tough maybe, were a little bit tougher. Get it? <laughs> tougher? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. Anyway, I am hoping to see more blocks, maybe like a smooth version, etc. With like the tough and white, because the white could kind of work as a... I know we have quartz and stuff, but maybe having another thing like marble? It, it, it's a it's it's a pretty cool looking block so maybe we can be able we will be able to do more with these two blocks in the future now on the topic of these amethysts right here what can we actually use them wait I spelled that wrong there we go now what can we actually use these amethyst shots for good question we can make two very very interesting things uh, with these one of which I'm actually more excited about than the other. But let us go ahead and make one of them right now. We can make tinted glass, which I am super excited about. So we place glass like this, and then ameth... Uh, hey? Nope, like that. Glass in the middle, four amethyst shards around it, and we get tinted glass right there. Now the cool thing about it is, you know, it's all lighted out here. Let's say we have a dark room in here, we want to grow our uh, mushrooms. Let's say we want to grow our mushrooms in a very dark... Well, that was convenient. <laughs> in a very dark room. Uh, normally we would have to do something like that. But now, 
to the glass. The light does not come in and we're still able to look in and out of that area. I absolutely love this block because you see one thing that I've always wanted when making like a skeleton spawner or a zombie spawner is to be able to see in. But if I just use double glass that light may come in and affect something and I want it fully dark in there. This solves that problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I absolutely love that. That looks so cool and I think this is going to be very, very useful. Now, of course, the other thing that we can make is the... What? Ah, there we go. <laughs> we can make the spyglass right here. And for that, we should probably go to the surface so we can try this thing out. All right, I've gone into survival mode for this. So it is no hotkey. You have to... Oh. Oh, I like that. I like the sound and I like the motion of it. That is pretty cool. It actually zooms in quite a lot as well. What happens if I do that? Ah, that's interesting. That is very interesting. So if I press F1 to hide my HUD, the black stuff doesn't come up. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. But yeah, this is really, really cool, and I like it. I like it a lot, actually. It is really, really cool. Now, I am un unable to, like, use it. I have to actually hold it in my hands in order to use it. What if I have... I could either have, have it in my offhand as well. While holding another tool. So that's pretty cool. Right there. And if we toggle... Uh, what button is that? No, oh, it's not set. There we go. Now it is. If we toggle cinematic mode so it goes smooth like this, it is more stable when moving it around. And if we disable it, yeah. That's a matter of preference what you want there and then, but I like this. This is cool. Hey, Squid. Hey, Squiddy. Smile for the camera. Oh, dear. Okay. So that is a very nice feature as well. Previously, we would have had to use a mod like Optifine and other zoom mods in order to get like a zoom effect. But now, it is in Vanilla Minecraft, right here. Now for another item that I think a lot of people is going to benefit from. Because, yeah, inventory space. You're probably familiar with this if you explore a lot, and this could very well be my inventory. Took some rails, got a little bit of slime, got some food on the way, found some melons, found some carrots in a village, and found some diamonds and iron and some turtle eggs, and one-fourth of the inventory has already been taken up. Not anymore. Now we are able to make bundles, and these are really, really cool. So, these bundles are able to hold 64 items, so a stack of anything in them. Now, the way we actually take items into it is we hold it and then we right-click on that item with the bundle. Uh, like so. And boom! All of that has now been put into here, and we can even tell some of the stuff that is in here. Now, if we... Uh, eventually, it will say, like, add, uh, add one more uh, and 11 more, depending on how much there is. But this is pretty cool. Now, I don't actually know how to get it. Oh. Okay, so wait. Huh? Okay, that's interesting. I guess it makes sense. So to empty it, you just right-click it and all of it drops out immediately. I feel like what would be cool is that you could take one thing out at a time. So like if you hold down shift and then, uh, well, in this case, control, then it would, for example, start from the top and go to bottom. So... Now I do it and then it go gives me the slime balls only and then moves on to the next one and the next one and the next one. I feel like that would be handy if you already have a messy inventory and just have a bunch of items here and then do it. Uh, because I wonder if you have a full inventory and do that, I imagine it's going to f uh, just spread onto the ground, isn't it? So if I do something like this and then I like that, uh, do that. Nope, it just disappears. That could be because I'm in creative. Hold on. All right. I have a bunch of stuff in here. It is four different things, but it is four different things too much. I'm gonna go into survival mode. I'm gonna empty it. Yeah, it's just gonna drop on the ground. And I will have to drop stuff to pick it up. So I feel like being able to like control right click it and it just takes one item out of, at a time would be pretty cool. Um, so hopefully something like that 
will be something that gets added. But either way, it is amazing to be able to like just do this and just have that. Now, of course, if you've got another bundle, you're not able to put a another bundle with items inside of it. Like that, that does that, that cannot happen. <laughs> Forget that idea. But what I am interesting about is, can you put full shulker boxes of things? So say I've been out mining and I got that. I uh, need to, eh? Yep, there we go. So we have this shulker box right here. Am I able to put, no, what if I empty it? Nope, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been interesting if you were able to put the bundle uh, or the shulker box inside the bundle. Then you could have a pretty overpowered story. But no, you're not able to do that. I think that is good in a way. Also, I have not been able to get a result from this yet. Uh, because this thing just haven't grown fast enough. But let me know if that is something that would uh, be able to be used for something like this down below in the comments. If this would work. If you think this would work. I imagine it would because it would change the state of the block i guess and then this would detect it yeah i guess this could work but i don't know maybe we'll see i guess <laughs> but anyways guys that is going to be it for this video right here showcasing some of the stuff that is in the new update now let me know what you think of this video uh i have done snapshot videos before but i haven't i have always tried to do them very technical and getting all the details and all the numbers of how stuff spawns and stuff like that but this one was more just chill and take one thing at a time and just look at the overall stuff um i would have liked it to be a little bit shorter but i guess i can try next time <laughs> but anyways i really hope you have enjoyed let me know what you liked uh, if you liked this video and the style i did it in let me know if you liked it down below in the comments and if you did be sure to leave a like on the video as well it helps me out a ton and if you haven't already consider subscribing. It, uh, it helps me out a ton as well. So yeah, plus I might make more of this stuff. But anyways, that's going to be it for this one. I really hope you have enjoyed it. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day and goodbye. Now, hold on. One final thing I want to test with this. <laughs> that's... <laughs> I'm gonna end it here. <laughs> that's hmm. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> uh, have a good day. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm gonna. I have to put that into the thumbnail somehow. I don't know why, but I'm going to. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding.